శ్రీ గురు చరిత్ర చాప్టర్ సిక్స్ నామధారక ఆస్ట్ నాట్ సర్ప్రైజ్డ్ లిటిల్ వైల్ కాశీ బద్రీనాథ్ అండ్ కేదార్నాథ్ హ్యావ్ బీన్ ఎస్టిమ్ సిన్స్ హోరీ టైమ్స్ ఫార్ దేర్ హోలీనెస్ హోరీ మీన్స్ అన్లిమిటెడ్ ఆర్ ఓవర్ యూస్డ్ లాంగ్ టైమ్ వీ క్యాన్ అండర్స్టాండ్ వై శ్రీపద విజిటెడ్ దెమ్ బట్ వాట్ ఈస్ గ్రేట్ అబౌట్ గోకర్ణ దట్ హీ షుడ్ గో ఆల్ ద వే టు విజిట్ ఇట్ ప్లీజ్ అండ్ లైట్ టర్న్ మీ ఆన్ దిస్ పాయింట్ సిద్ధ రిప్లైడ్ వన్స్ ద మదర్ ఆఫ్ రావణ ఆఫ్ రావణాసుర ద డెమెన్ కింగ్ ఆఫ్ ద రామాయణ ఫేమ్ విష్ టు అటైన్ కైలాసా ద బోర్డ్ ఆఫ్ లార్డ్ శివ అండ్ విత్ విత్ దిస్ ఆబ్జెక్ట్ షీ స్టార్ట్ ఉట్ వర్షిపింగ్ అండ్ అర్త్ అండ్ శివలింగ రావణాసుర వాస్ ప్రౌడ్ who was proud of his might wished to remove the whole of kailasa to his mother's presence using all his might he lifted up the whole mount of kailasa to his on his head this caused a great commotion in all the celestial realms of existence and the whole of our earth shook as though the very end of the creation was at hand goddess parvati prayed to lord shiva to duly protect the worlds from so untimely an end then the latter pressed down the mount kailasa under his foot till the mighty ravanasura was almost crushed beneath the pressure in great fear of death the demon king ravanasura humbly prayed to the lord in desperation the lord's heart was at last touched with compassion and he uplifted ravanasura in gratitude the latter sang most melodiously in his praise lord shiva was pleased with his song and offered to grant him a boon Ravana Sura submitted my capital of Lanka is all built of gold and beyond the reach of anyone the goddess of wealth is my maid servant brahma the creator is my court astrologer all the gods including the lord of death are my attendants so there is nothing which i cannot secure now my mother wished to live forever in kailasa and serve you and so i came to take it home O oh Lord if at all you wish to grant me a boon grant me that I could take the Kailasa along with you to my city of Lanka the lord of Kailasa replied Ravana what will you or your mother do with this mount Kailasa i shall bestow on you my atmalinga which is incomparably superior to Kailasa my by worshiping it you will attain to my own state of being ravana gratefully accepted the same and very happily returned to lanka with it sage narada messenger of the gods witnessed the whole incident and reported the matter to them in great anxiety brahma vishnu and narada approached shiva and asked him why he granted such a potent atmalinga to the demon king like ravana they said is it proper that he who is a thorn in the flesh of all beings attain to your power and glory i was not kept i was i was too captivated by his charming song to consider the unwisdom of my spontaneous gesture and so bestowed it on him without a second thought by now he could not have reached lanka yet and something can be done at once to retrieve it said shiva and prompted narada and ganesha to contrive a way to some of deprive the demon king of the link linga accordingly narada at once approached ravana with the speed of thought and addressed him oh ravana when are you coming and whither are you bound ravana replied having won the heart of lord shiva i have gained this atma linga which i am taking to lanka and showed it to him narada said oh ravana once a terrible beast started killing all the wild buffaloes near a forest at last the holy trinity hunted it down and made each one of shiva linga from its own each one a shiva linga from its horns they transformed them into their them their selves hence for treated them as their atma linga this is one of those three and can bestow the eternal proximity of lord shiva and hence immortality and infinite power as he went on elaborating the glo- its glory ravana interrupted him and said o sage i do not have time to hear of its glory but o ravana it is time for your evening prayer how can you go away without attending to it said narada and said they are elated that he could find so potent a reason for delaying the delaying the demon king's progress to his homeland 
Meanwhile, Lord Ganesha came there in the guise of a young celibate. Ravana accosted him in a stern voice. Who are you? Where are you going? The boy celibate replied, I am the son of one Uma and Shankara. I am frightened by your demeanor. Let go my hand. Hold this Linga for just a short while. I shall show you my golden city Lanka and you can happily live there, insisted Ravana. I cannot hold this heavy linga. Besides, I will not come to Lanka, which is a city of terrible demons, said the celibate. However, Ravana pleaded with him again and again and thrust the linga in the hands of Ganesha and made for the nearby sea to attend to his evening prayers. O oh, Ravana, when I can no longer hold this, I shall call out to you thrice and if by that time you do not turn up, I shall place the linga down here itself, said Ganesha. No sooner... No sooner did Ravana leave the spot than Ganesha called out to him thrice and when he could not turn up, the celibate meditated on Lord Vishnu and kept the Shiva Linga on earth. The gods above witnessed the successful accomplishment of that plan. Later, Ravana returned and at the sight of the Linga kept on earth was much depressed. He bet the young lad Ganesha and with all his might tried to lift up the Linga. The whole earth shook under the force but the Linga did not budge even a little. Ever since the Linga came to be called Mahabaleshwar Linga, that is the Linga of the Almighty Lord. As the Linga is in the shape of the ear of a cow, the place where it is located came to be known as the Holy Gokarna. Go meaning a cow. The place it is sacred, the place is as sacred as Kailasa. There Lord Shiva dwells with all his retinue of gods. Hence the place came to be a resort of earnest seekers after spiritual perfection. Gods, demons, mortals and even human beings have got their wishes fulfilled in this place by the grace of Lord Shankara. Thus it is one of the most sacred places and ancient legend testifies to its great sanctity. A king by name Kalmashapada became a fierce demon through the curse of sage Vashishta. Once the demon killed and devoured a pious Brahmin, the Brahmin's wife then cursed him thus. Even after you regain your earlier human form, on the expiry of the curse of Vashishta, you shall perish the moment you unite with your wife, for you have cruelly deprived me of my life's companion. In course of time, the curse of the sage expired and the king returned to his capital city. When his queen received him with the utmost joy, he recounted to her the curse of the Brahmin's wife. She was shocked beyond measure to know that the joy of their reunion after such a long separation was embittered by the curse. Both the king and the queen went on pilgrimage in the hope of finding redemption from the sin and the consequent curse. In the course of their wandering, they met the sage Gautama and confided to him their plight. The sage replied in compassion, Do not fear, O king, when we have such a holy and wish-fulfilling place as Gokarna, what can the sin of killing a Brahmin do to you? All the water in that place is as holy as Ganga and all the stones there are as potent as Shivalinga. There is nothing which cannot be achieved in that place which is wholly filled with such holy water and innumerable Shivalingas. I shall recount an incident which I have, which I had witnessed there. When a woman at Chandala clan died at Gokarna, the attendants of Shiva came to her, came to take her soul to Kailasa. When I asked them about it, they said, this woman was a Brahmin's daughter in her previous life. When her husband died in her childhood, in that life, under the influence of lust, she lived as the concubine of a wealthy businessman. When her kinsfolk came to know of it, they forsook her and performed the re religious rites of retribution. Henceforth, she cast all sense of shame to the winds and started living a detestable life openly. She got addicted to liquor. One day she was drunk and she mistook the calf of her cow for a goat and ate its flesh, keeping its head for the next day. When her lover arrived the next morning, she saw the calf's head and started bemoaning that a tiger had killed the calf. She committed several such sins and in consequence, she suffered much in hell and was reborn as a woman of the Chandala clan in this life. She was born blind and suffered from leprosy. After some time, the parents who cared for her had died. Having no one to care for her, she arrived at Gokarna. She starved for several days and begged for food on the holy Shivaratri. As it was customary for devotees to fast on that day, they had nothing to give her except a handful of bay leaves. 
which were used for the worship of Lord Shiva. As they were not fit for eating, she dropped them down. One of them fell on a Shiva Linga. Thus, even without her knowing it, she happened to fast on the Shivaratri day and worship the Shiva Linga with a bale leaf. Therefore, all the sins of her previous life were burnt out. And so we, the attendants of Shiva, have now come to take her soul to his abode in heaven. So saying, they be sprinkled her body with ambrosia. Amrita and took her to the higher world in the divine vehicle. If the righteous act which she had unknowingly performed was so efficacious, can you can imagine how much more so could continuous worship be? So, O king, you proceed to Gokarna and serve the Lord there. You shall be free from the sins. In accordance with the counsel of the sage Gautama, the king and the queen went to that holy place and freed themselves of the curse through austerities. In such a holy place as this, Sri Pada lived for three years. Having uplifted several seekers there spiritually, the Lord went to Kuruvapura and disappeared there. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwaraha, Guru Sachat Parabrahma Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Jai Guru Tatta